ברוך השם, you're a bad Jew. שלום. You're listening to Bad Jew. With me today is Roz Rothstein, the co-founder and CEO of Stand With Us. I couldn't be more excited to have someone of your caliber on Bad Jew. Welcome to the show. How are you doing today? Thank you so much, Chaz. It's such a pleasure to be with you. Yeah, no, it's uh, incredibly awesome to have you here. And today's episode, we're talking about why should people stand with us? No pun intended. You know, we just did an episode on why some Jews don't like Israel. If you haven't checked out that episode yet, please be sure to check out part one. This right here is part two. This is why this is why people should stand with us. But before we actually address that question, Roz, I am going to ask you to partake in the Bad Jew Challenge. Tell your life story in four minutes. Are you ready to go? I am ready. I am ready. <laughs> All right. Amazing. Ready, set, go. Go. Oh. Okay, so I am the daughter of two Holocaust survivors. I grew up believing that everybody was a child of Holocaust survivors because that was the circle that I was in. So all of my friends, uh, the people at my Hebrew schools and, uh, and everybody in my neighborhood seemed to come from the Holocaust survivor crowd. But, you know, I quickly learned as I grew that that wasn't the case and that it was a very special group. It's an extraordinary club that we're in. We are very sensitive to anti-Semitism as a result. You should know that Holocaust survivors didn't really speak very much about their experiences for the first 25 years after the Holocaust. It really wasn't until Steven Spielberg started to take testimonies that uh, all of them began to came, come out with their stories. They were protecting us. They were protecting us for those first uh, 25 years after the Holocaust. They didn't want to hurt their kids or impact their kids with their own pain and suffering. So that's part of who I am. Another part of who I am is I grew up in the Orthodox community. I can't say that I'm still Orthodox, so I'm a, a bad Jew, but um, I am very traditional and, uh, and part of a, sort of an eclectic scene. I, I actually, in my life, have participated in every segment of Judaism, whether it's uh, a reform, conservative, orthodox, unaffiliated. And so it, that all led to the work that I do today, which is very eclectic. We're very inclusive. We want all Jews. We want non-Jews too, but we want all Jews to stand with us for the state of Israel and to stand with us against anti-Semitism. Back to me for a second. So I grew up with a lot of firsthand training in administration. So I worked in the Jewish community as a professional. I was the youngest uh, director at the JCCs that supervised day camps. I, I think I was 20 years old when I had 60 people to supervise. So I cut my teeth on administration at the JCCs, which was at the time part of the Federation. So my story is really a community Jewish story with my own personal background being a daughter of two Holocaust survivors and uh, growing up in the Orthodox world and then opening up to being part of all the different Jewish worlds. So I, I just love being Jewish. I love it. And I uh, so I'm kind of a good Jew in that way. We started this organization 21 years ago because everything in my life made sense to lead to this moment of 21 years ago when we began this organization. I'll stop there. Well, Roz, I, that was incredible. That was really well put together. By the way, I want everyone to know before the interview, Roz was telling me, I think I'm going to tie myself because I don't want to go over. I don't want to be that one person. But you buttoned up your life story so well. That was so great. I have a tough time with that challenge. You did a great job yourself. That was really impressive. Kudos to you. Seriously. Thank um, you, Chad. Yeah. And one thing I want to say as well, I found it very relatable when you're talking about how you partook in different segments of Judaism, different styles of Judaism, where... At one point you said that you were not affiliated. At one point you said that you 
experienced reform and conservative and you kind of went through these different experiences today you would call yourself traditional and i found that really admirable that you've let these eclectic experiences lead to this inclusive nature that has stand with us today i think stand with us in the past has been accused of being a very right-wing agenda what do you have to say to people who say that stand with us is strictly about pushing a right-wing message so Chaz, listen, listen to me and listen to me carefully and everybody out there, anybody who supports Israel uh, will be dubbed as right wing. So if you're on a college campus and you are a Zionist, if you love the state of Israel because it is the ancestral homeland of the Jewish people, just by virtue of that, you are considered right wing. There is nothing other than that about stand with us except that we stand up for the state of Israel and not, a, not its policies, but that there needs to be an existence of the state of Israel in the ancestral homeland of the Jewish people. So that makes us quote unquote right wing. Sorry, I, I don't know what to say about that. There's nothing else that's right wing uh, about stand with us. We are super inclusive and all of our boards across the world are composed of people from every walk, walk of life. We're neither Labor or Lee could, not Democrat, not Republican. We are just an inclusive, nonpartisan organization. Well said. And I also want to point out that I really feel like when you exist as an American Jew, anywhere in the country, it doesn't matter what state you're from, I feel like you have like this weird like pull from both sides of like being able to identify with certain policies in the American politics. I could rant about this for days, but the bottom line is that being an American Jew kind of feels like being the bastard child to American politics in the sense that there is no political party that fully represents what Jews stand for. And it's from my perspective, at least, I don't know if there's any other Jew who's listening to this or even any other diversity who can relate to this either, but I've always felt very out of place when it comes to American politics. And I, I got to imagine I'm not the only one out there. Well, it, we're a convener. Let's say that Israel brings people together. And in terms of politics, it's, it's really not about politics. It's about, do you love the state of Israel? Are you feeling connected to it? Uh, if you're 11, 12 or 13 years old and you don't feel connected, Let's see how we can get you to that point, because you should, if you're Jewish, you should feel connected to the one Jewish country in the world. So this is really for us, never about politics. Now, you could have a uh, Republican or a Democratic uh, president who issues some sort of a policy that we're upset with, and then we'll get involved because it's a policy issue. It's not you know, it's a policy issue. Let's say, let's say some administration decided they're not selling something to Israel that Israel needs to protect itself. Then Stand With Us would probably get involved and it would not have anything to do with Democrat or Republican. It would have to do with the policy itself. Sure. Sure. Of course. Now, stepping aside from kind of the American zoo that is our political system here, we're here to talk about why people should stand with us. I think in order to understand why people should, people have to also understand if you're not familiar at this point with Stand With Us is, what is Stand With Us? What does the organization effectively do for people? <laughs> so uh, we, do, we do a lot of things, uh, but all around a mission. So the best organizations that you see out there are the ones that actually stick to their missions. So our mission is supporting Israel through education and standing up against anti-Semitism. And, and these are not just words. We're very, very involved in educating young people, young teens. Uh, we have internships. We have the Kenneth Leventhal internship for high school students. It's a year long internship. We have uh, the, the uh, Emerson Fellowship for college students, it's a year-long program, and it's it's intense. And and uh, we have social media uh, that is really leading in many ways out there for Israel and against anti-Semitism. So 
uh, I encourage everybody out there watching to please, you know, follow us on, on one or all of the platforms, especially God forbid, there's something that's going on in Israel. Like, you know, they're starting to shoot rockets again or something, you know, there was a knife attack. You can really get up to the minute information from our social media platforms. We are so on it. Our, our team doesn't go to sleep during a crisis. So I encourage you to, to check it out so that you can know exactly what's going on and the details of it. I think that's something that I've always been incredibly impressed with, with your organization is that it's not just that you care about Israel. There's a lot of organizations out there that care about Israel that have joined the fight against anti-Semitism. You've even founded other organizations that are like sub variants of stand with us or little you know fledglings of stand with us to continue to fight anti-semitism there's a lot of organizations that do that there's also a lot more people that fight on the in the name of anti-semitism they, they want to kill jews but the bottom line is you despite what organ what other organizations have done despite other forces out there that are external you've maintained a brand integrity maybe this is m more so my professional expertise coming in being that i run a marketing business and that this is the side thing I'm doing right now, you know, Mr. Thrive Media, but you've maintained brand integrity. You've maintained your mission all this time. And you've been able to add more and more and more features over time that have been able to bridge gaps between Jews to other Jews, Jews to non-Jews. I also want to focus a little bit on that as well, how you've been able to create these relationships with non-Jewish individuals and organizations. What does that process look like? I think it's very important uh, that people understand that that today, particularly with rising anti-Semitism, it is more important than ever, ever to build bridges. It is more important for you to have those non-Jewish friends over to your Shabbat table to celebrate Passover and bring a few people that never have been to a Passover Seder, whether they're Jewish or not Jewish. This is a time for us to build bridges. And at Stand With Us, we actually have a an effort that is doing a lot of work in that regard, reaching out to the Hindu community, to the Christian community, black and white, and no matter, that, that we will support them and they are supporting us. I'll give you an example that's very timely. Right now, uh, we have just launched a Together Against Anti-Semitism campaign. Together Against Anti-Semitism. Three little words, three words. And we have partners that are not from the Jewish community that will be participating with us to elevate this concept of standing together against anti-Semitism. We just launched today with two billboards in Florida. Why? Wow. Because of all of the stupid flyers from this, you know, stupid neo-Nazi group that that is hanging banners on freeways that Ye was right and Kanye is, I mean, the, the, this whole thing is escalated to a point where what is politically incorrect has become sexy and correct. And what, I mean, a day of hate against the Jewish people just happened a week ago and we didn't hear enough voices coming out against it. Something is really wrong when that happens. Yeah. And we can't, we can't allow that. When we say the words never again, uh, we, we better mean things like this, where uh, a day of hate is launched and it's got a pretty high profile and that our friends and allies needed to come forward and say something like this is inappropriate and disgusting and stop what you're doing. And, you know, they, they just, you know, they need to be informed. They need to know what our, what our issues are. We need to hear what their struggles are. We need to stand together. And, and by the way, the Hindu and Jewish communities have so much in common. They have so much in common uh, that, you know, and, and there have been this struggle against hate. And so to stand together uh, makes us so much more powerful. The, the uh, Christian community uh, that, that is actually, you know, grafted, grafted from Judaism, and, and that there, you know, Jesus walked in Israel and was born in Israel and lived in Israel and taught in Israel. When they go to Israel, it is very meaningful for them. And oh, they feel they feel their own roots there. They feel their own roots and they should. 
they should be standing up for the state of Israel and really making sure that everybody knows how they feel. And we, we need to have those alliances now more than ever. Absolutely. I, you know, I've, I've had very similar conversations with uh, non-Jewish figures and, and some of the most meaningful line exchanges of dialogue that I've ever had with anybody when it came to their religion was with a Christian at a barbershop in Jerusalem. So it's, it's really amazing when you create these uh, bridges between other people, even if they're not fighting for your cause. I think that's one of the major differences between then and now, then being the 1930s, 1940s of the, the wretched Holocaust that we experienced to now is that we have organizations like Stand With Us to build these bridges and to keep us better protected. Even though a day of hate can come, even though it still is discouraging to see that we have an uphill battle, an uphill effort that needs to be put in to reaching out to these organizations, organizations like yours have not only maintained brand integrity, but they have maintained the amount of energy that it takes to accomplish such things that they have maintained the outreach that you're always on your toes, ready to report. I also want to point out here that, you know, what Roz is pointing out is not just smoke and mirrors. There are actual, you know, official organizations that have come in and gotten involved. You'll notice there are some organizations that do have Jewish backgrounds like Club Z, Stand With Us, Alpha Epsilon Pi, Gawaii Pi. But then you also have all these other organizations as well. The Hindu American Foundation, Scholars for e Peace Eagles, in the Middle East. Eagles yeah. Wings. Eagles Wings, uh, right. Yeah, uh, Institute of Black Solidarity with Israel. Yes. You know, H-A-P-A-C, I imagine dash F-L is dash Florida, right? So these different organizations, oh, Israel Christian Nexus. You know, these are these are organizations that don't have a Jewish background, but are still very much involved in our in our fight well i guess the one thing i don't understand is why would another organization like theirs care about us why would they why why would they or why wouldn't they why would they <laughs> let's say why wouldn't they no well, uh, I, I feel like that's I, easier no it, I mean, like like say say you know i'm just a nice hindu person enjoying a casual sunday and Roz came up to me and said hey we're dealing with a lot of anti-semitism today can you come and join us I'm sorry if I'm Hindu and I'm enjoying a nice sunny day. I don't want to think about the Holocaust. I don't want to think about violence and fighting and having to protest something. Why would another organization come and support us? Again, I think because we share so much in common with people who suffer themselves with hate and, you know, unfair kinds of attacks who, you know, have been at the brunt of, you know, this kind of discrimination they understand it, but they also love Israel. That's the thing. There are a lot of people out there that love Israel and we just need to help them get a little bit more involved, get a little bit more organized. And, and we can be that platform with them, with them. And they're very open to it. So I'm finding that, that we have allies out there that I never knew about. Hmm. All we have to do is ask. All we have to do is just, you know, is stretch our hand out. And there are people out there that really want to help. And this is the time to get that help. This is wow. that time. Yeah. Uh, we also, I should mention that we also, the way we express stand with us is by, I liked when you said uh, we're not smoke and mirrors. We really do this work. We really are committed. We have 250 pro bono attorneys across the United States who are waiting for assignments to help students in high school and in colleges and even in middle schools with their challenges with being bullied because they're Zionists, because they love Israel. And, and, and Israel is part of Jewish identity. So, you know, when, when a professor, uh, a teacher, a principal says to a student, you know, uh, no, you know, you can't be a Zionist and be here, or we can't treat, we're not going to be treating you the same way as all the other students in this class, or don't use the word Jew, which just happened here in Los Angeles. Don't use the word Jew in the name of your club. You know, we, we have to help these students know that we're right behind them and that we will help them express how they feel about that. And in some cases, even we have a title six complaint at, you know, George Washington University. It's been in the news for the last few weeks. It's a big issue. There was um, 
Laura uh, Sheehy, the, the professor in psychology, a mandatory class at the University of Washington in psychology. She, she, uh, she started treating her Jewish and her Israeli students differently in the classroom, penalizing them for complaining about it. We filed a Title VI complaint. Now everything is kind of unfolding in that direction. If you look up, if you look up Stand With Us, George Washington, Title VI, you'll be able to see what's going on there. It's, it's fascinating. And, and hopefully there will be change. That's what we want. We want Jewish students, Israeli students, non-Jewish students who love the state of Israel, we want them to be respected and to have a safe place on campus and not to feel like they're being marginalized. You know, it'd be nice to have more college a you know, college level Jews not feel like they're completely alone. And when you were talking about, you know, these experiences that you've had on different college campuses, I can't help but relate it to uh, my lawsuit, Volk for CSU Board of Trustees, all the way back in 2019. Of course, the when I was uh, recruited to be a part of that lawsuit, you know, that was back in 2017, but it took a few years to finally reach a settlement. And we didn't know it was even going to come out to turn out to be a settlement. It, we, you know, I, I was deposed with a lawyer that was very much not friendly, but it's amazing that organizations like the Jew, like, like stand with us have our back. And I think that the process for getting that better known is incredibly important. One thing I'm going to do as well, I'm going to intentionally put this little ticker at the bottom right now that any anti-Semitic incident that you do encounter, go to standuptohatred.com to make sure that you can get in direct contact with stand with us and the organizations around it and access some of the resources they have to fight against it. I think it's absolutely imperative right now. I got to imagine that if there are non-Jews who are listening to this episode, I hope that people under empathize with the amount of anti-Semitism. What, what are some of the stats, by the way? Can we can we get you know some specific metrics on this? Because anti-Semitism has been increasing at an excessive rate over the past year. And you know, Kanye West, of course, was part of the problem. We acknowledge that actually in episode two of this podcast, we had Kosha Dills, the Jewish rapper on the show. First episode is how do I fight anti-Semitism? And Kosha Dills had hit his, his answer. He talked about as well the need for bridging gaps between communities that are Jewish and not Jewish. So we did talk about that as well. But what are some of the specific metrics that we can point to that are impacting our community today? So let me just uh, say that nut, before I give you a, a statistic, showing pride in the face of hate, you know, standing tall is really important. So one of the things that we tell everybody is, is that, you know, you have many choices when you see something that is wrong. You have many choices. Uh, sometimes you won't be able to deal with it in the moment, but you may be able to deal with it after. Uh, but, but, more important for all of us together is to show this pride. And I do want to make the point that even a non-Jewish person can suffer from anti-Semitism. If they love the state of Israel and they express that, and then they get penalized for that, or they love the Jewish people and they have lots of friends that are Jewish and they're, they're going to a Passover Seder and somebody is saying terrible things about them because of that, that is anti-Semitism. It, it's all, you know, it, it doesn't, you don't have to be Jewish to suffer anti-Semitism. In terms of the, the key statistic, I think that it's an FBI statistic, is that, the, that Jews represent less than 2% of the American population and have suffered nearly 60% of hate crimes. So of all the hate crimes nearly 60% are related to Jews, have been attacks against Jews. So that that is a staggering number. And that's why people are so concerned. But we have seen a rise. Uh, we've gotten involved in all kinds of things recently. We, we now have a Holocaust education department. Mm. And uh, we, we put that uh, together in response to these increased numbers of swastikas, increased numbers of teachers and, and principals saying that, yeah, you know, the Holocaust, that's one opinion. 
I mean, this is not an opinion. Uh, this is this is, and then for me to hear this as a daughter of Holocaust survivors, it just sounds like everybody's losing their minds. But we do find out, going back to the statistics, that there's staggering amounts of people that do not know what happened in the Holocaust. There, there's huge numbers of students that can't even name one concentration camp. Ugh. There are even people who believe now that Jews started the Holocaust and that Jews are responsible for the 6 million uh, Jews that died, that they're responsible. So due to all of this, it has blended in one great big uh, scrambled egg as part of anti-Semitism. So Holocaust denial, Heil Hitlers by students in high schools, it's very serious. And our students are, our, our pro-Israel students, our Jews, uh, our, our non-Jews that, that love the state of Israel and, and are close with the Jewish people feel that this is very dangerous. It's dangerous. So what can we do? Well, if you're stand with us, you're gonna start frantically educating. So we opened up a new department, the Holocaust Education Center, and I think you're uh, scrolling it. You're scrolling it, thank you so much. And we are bringing Holocaust education, dynamic, dynamic programs to schools. We're coming into the classroom. So we're gonna assume that not every kid is gonna make it to a museum, because they're not. Many are, but many are not. And we're gonna bring Holocaust education into the classroom. I love that. Roz, I wanna ask you something. I don't know if you have the, if you, in your line of work, if you ever have the opportunity to speak more personally than professionally, but how does it make you feel when you come across a personal attack or any kind of report on anything of the matter that you just described? It kind of invigorates me. It is a challenge to me at the very deepest level. It, it is a challenge for me to do more. That's how I feel. Uh, there were kids, we just had a conference last weekend. It was so great. Hundreds of students came from all over the world together to be here in Los Angeles and really develop their network of uh, pro-Israel friends and uh, supporters and get the support from all the people that stand with us that are experts and that support them all around the world. And the question came up from one of the students, what keeps everybody in this fight? Like, what is it that you wake up in the morning and it's really bad, like every day there's new challenges. What keeps us in it is this very thing, is that when you see the Heil Hitlers, when you see the Holocaust denial, when you see the level of anti-Semitism, the day of hate, the day of hate, my gosh, come on, it's so inappropriate and, and, and people needed to stand up to that. When you see that, you, you know, that is what motivates me to do more, to just to, to get bigger and to get stronger and to get, you know, to show our pride and to, to educate more people and to put more programs out there and that are that are dynamic and fun and really hit it, that hit the 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 need for more information, more education, and more inspiration, more inspiration. Wow. Well said. I absolutely love that. I'll tell you right now that let's pretend there was a world where Stand With Us didn't exist. You know, the survivors of the Holocaust and their descendants were not organized. They did not reach out to other organizations. I think in that imaginary world that I just described, we would be lost. And even if the if World War II had ended the same way it did with the Allies winning, the Nazis still would have won. But organizations like Stand With Us, the partners of Stand With Us, the organizations that are supported by you, and so on and so forth, the college classrooms that get to be enlightened by your presence and what you have to talk about. That in itself is existence of the Jews winning. And I just wanted to make that statement. One more thing as well that I wanted to point out, um, 
on Stand With Us website, there are a lot of resources. There are a lot of places to go and check out. One thing I was doing when I was digging around doing my research about the organization was I came across a pamphlet that was created uh, by your organization. I'm not sure when the pamphlet was created, but this is about the process for building bridges. And at one point, um, the pamphlet uh, brings this up. Step five, build relationships and bridges with people who are not Jewish. Again, Stand With Us is not smoke and mirrors. They genuinely are bridging that gap between Jews and non-Jews. Invite non-Jewish guests to your Jewish cultural or religious events like your Passover Seder. Welcome the stranger. Attend cultural events of other groups. Earnestly seek to learn about other people and what matters to them as you also seek to educate them about what matters to you. This is an important way to fight anti-Semitism. When Roz at the beginning of the episode said that she is eclectic and that Stand With Us is inclusive, no matter what right-wing agenda you try to slap onto them. That is just not the case. No matter what your prejudice is, no matter what the bias is, Stand With Us holds true their brand integrity. And so I really appreciate the edu educational opportunity. I also want to uh, just share a little story as well that uh, I, 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 I wanted to just like bring into this. This is more of a personal interjection than anything to this conversation, but my girlfriend, Kelly, she has a roommate who is Indian and uh, they were, she was celebrating uh, Diwali and I had never celebrated Diwali before, but what happened was I went to that Diwali party and it was so much fun. fun. All the food was delicious. And um, there are ways that you can eat the way that I eat kosher style in a Diwali household in that situation in that in, the, in an Indian household in that situation. And what ended up happening was, as a result, I became obsessed with Bollywood films because that's all we watched that whole night. And I ended up watching RRR. For those who haven't seen RRR yet, go check it out. Anyway, side tangent over. Bottom line is, please go to www.standwithus.com to learn more about their amazing organization, what they do. Be sure to follow them on social media. Roz, is there anything else, any lasting message you want to share with the listeners before we send off today? Just thank you, Chaz. I think you you really do understand the organization, and I think you were able to really give a good overview of how we can help people and what we believe in, and that you know we just you know we're trying to make the world a better place and and build bridges and make sure that people are much more informed about Israel, about the Jewish people, and about fighting anti-Semitism. Well, thank you so much. And I look forward to talking to you soon. Have an amazing day. Thank you. Shalom. <laughs>